In this podcast episode, I'm going to talk about five things you can do to support your friend if they're going through a tough time. I think you need to move your chair back. Hi there, my name is James, and thank you so much for checking out my podcast, Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Life as a dad or life as a man or life as a human being is stressful and challenging, never more so than now. This cost of living crisis we're living through is gonna put an added pressure on every element of your life. I know that when I've been through challenging times of my life, be that losing a loved one or struggles with a job or relationship, the support of a friend who seems like they're generally invested in wanting to help is quite often the difference between feeling like I can cope with the situation and feeling like I can't. A couple of years ago when my dad died, it really knocked me sideways. And I was lucky enough to have a really good couple of friends, in particular one friend, who really supported me through that process. This might be a bit of a generalization and hopefully it's something that's getting better. But traditionally, as men, as dads, we're less likely to feel comfortable sharing our feelings with other people when we're struggling. Therefore, if you've got a friend at work or in your social circle that you're worried about, who you know is going through a tough time, you may have to be the person to broach the subject. The one thing I remember from being a Brighton Seafront officer where our job was to support the emergency services, manage the lifeguard service, but also do early morning patrols of the beaches. Whenever I saw someone sat on their own on the beach or on a bench at six in the morning when it was still dark, very cold. If you have a gut instinct that someone is struggling, follow that instinct. Quite often when I went up to these people and said, you're all right, no one was ever offended that I asked if they were okay. And quite often people could suddenly twig, oh, you, you're worried about me because it's six in the morning and I'm sat on on the beach. People were always appreciative that another human being was looking out for them. If you were sat on your own, maybe looking a bit glum, on a bench, in the middle of nowhere, and a complete stranger said, you're all right, how would you feel? I think I'd have a restored faith in humanity that actually people do care. So tip number one on how to support a friend who's struggling, just listen to them. Listening is a skill. And I always tell my kids and myself, there's a reason that we were born with two ears and one mouth. It's so rare these days to get someone's attention, like really get someone's attention. And there's nothing worse when you're trying to open up to someone or share something that's difficult if you feel like someone really isn't that invested in listening to you. They're scrolling on their phone, they're not looking at you, they're preoccupied with what's going on around them. If someone's going through a tough time and they've had the strength of character and courage to share that with you, respect that by giving them your undivided attention. You don't know how important listening to them might be. Sometimes I find it difficult when I'm listening to someone having a conversation and they say something that instantly makes me want to reply to not jump in. But if someone's having a conversation and you're giving them a safe environment to share something, just honor that. Just wait. I have to do this because I'm a nightmare, I think, sometimes jumping in and wanting to fix someone's problems. Sometimes just giving someone the space to talk will give them the opportunity to fix their own problems. We all know what we need to do. Giving someone the safe space and the freedom to just be honest and talk about how they feel is such a gift. And tip number two of how to support someone who's struggling, if someone is talking to you and sharing their problems, make sure you've really understood what they've said. Not only will this completely underline that you have totally been listening to them, but also if you know exactly what they're going through and the problem is, it'll mean you'll be able to help them better. I know that when my dad died and I was sharing how I was feeling with my friend, the fact that he would ask me questions about it and repeat stuff back to me that maybe wasn't clear, just made me feel even more heard. It made me feel even more supported and cared for. And tip number three, how to support a friend when they're struggling, take it seriously. Sometimes it's very easy, certainly with blokes, just to make a bit of a joke about it all. Especially if the subject matter is quite intense. If they've lost someone, or they're going through a relationship breakup, or they've lost a job, sometimes it feels easy to get rid of the tension and the sadness by making light of it. All I would say is do what's appropriate for your relationship. Quite often, if it's consistent with your relationship, black humor is good. I know with my friends, sometimes being teased out of my dark mood is actually what I needed. But if that's not how you consistently talk to your friend, maybe don't start doing it now. As their friend, you will probably know what they need. Do they need comfort? Do they need space to listen? Do they need to be affectionately teased? Do they need to be encouraged? You'll know. But regardless of that, whatever they say to you, take it seriously. 
don't laugh it off or make light of it. Because the problem is if you do, there's a chance they probably won't want to share anything with you in the future. And this leads on to tip number four, ask them how you can help them. You might find that just listening to them is all they actually really want in regards to your support. But you never know, there may be something that they really need help with that they're just for too proud to ask for. If you can take the initiative and say, look, can I help you with this? Or what do you need help with? It gives them the opportunity to actually tell you and be honest. The thing I found, if you give someone enough space to listen, they'll give you all the information you need and more. If someone feels safe to talk to you, that you're not going to judge them, you're not going to make fun of them, you're going to take them seriously, you're not going to listen to them and just wait for your chance to jump in and, and fix their problems. You're just going to give them some space to be really authentic and be really honest with how they feel. I'm pretty sure by the end of that conversation, you'll know what you can do to support them. And tip number five, even if they tell you that actually they don't need you to do anything, maybe check in on them a bit more regularly than you would normally do. Not so much that it becomes really annoying. If you're used to seeing your mate once a week, then maybe don't ring them two or three times a day. But I know that when I was struggling, my friend agreeing to come and do jujitsu with me once a week, when I knew that really it's probably the last thing he wanted to do, really meant a lot. For me, knowing that irrespective of how busy the rest of my life was, I'd get to check in with my mate once a week, We'd get to do something that at least I wanted to do and have a drink and a chat afterwards really helped, especially in those times when I felt a bit alone and a bit isolated. And bonus tip number six, maybe do something you both want to do. If he's honest, I really don't think my friend wanted to do jujitsu. If he had, he probably would have taken up at some point in the five years previous when all I did was talk about training jujitsu when we were working together. But the fact that he did that because he knew that would be one effective way to check in with me on a weekly basis really meant a lot. And so if and when the time comes for you to repay that kindness, then do what they want to do. Because the physical act of you doing that will be showing them that you're putting them first. You're doing something that they know you're not thrilled about, but that you're doing to support them. That means a lot. We seem to be living in an epidemic of loneliness. Never underestimate how your one act of kindness positivity, friendliness can totally change this perspective of someone's day. There are often times when I say good morning to someone, a stranger I'm passing the street and they don't even look up or acknowledge or say good morning back. And I think, oh, that's rude. They will have heard you and I'm pretty sure it will have helped in some way. They may not have the strength of character to lift up and meet your eye or say good morning back, but they will have heard you. And I think every act of kindness will help to restore faith in humanity, especially for someone who may be struggling to see the point. I really hope you got something this podcast. I've also created a stress management course for parents. If you'd like completely free access to it, just go to my website, www.dadmindmatters.com. The only downside that in order to do so, you need to join our mailing list and I might try and sing you a ukulele song on your birthday. If you like what I'm trying to do to support other parents, please share it with someone and maybe even think about subscribing. Worst case scenario, if I start annoying you after a month, you can always unsubscribe. That's what I did. All right, wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care.